Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dangerous Ideas. I'm Lee Camp. Welcome. See, now, I don't, what we'll start with, I don't normally get into the celebrity news. I don't normally, you know, cover the stories, Taylor Swift changed her underwear today or whatever it is. I don't. But when the Israel lobby gets involved and in pedo parties and, and lawsuits and some of the richest billionaire Zionists in the world are connected into some of the biggest rappers and producers in the world. Now we're talking. Now we're getting closer to the type of thing that I would cover. So that's what we're discussing today is the billionaire Zionists involved in this uh, massive uh, ongoing lawsuit, many lawsuits against P. Diddy and the, the, the world he created around these pedo parties. Um, and yeah, that we're, we're, we're going to get into that in just a moment. I also have uh, how Biden, how the Biden administration manages to tell you that they've added more jobs than ever before. And yet two thirds of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. How does that math work out? We'll be getting into that in a few minutes. And I will also be trying to save some time in this upcoming hour to destroy the propagandist, the Israeli propagandist that was uh, debating Abby Martin on the on the Piers Morgan show. And Abby did an excellent job. I love Abby. Good friend of mine. She is wonderful. But there were so many lies and so much garbage spraying out of that fire hose of a face that woman had that uh, that th there's plenty left on the table for me to destroy. So I'll be uh, doing that a little later in the hour. But let's start with, uh, this is just video of the massive raid of P. Diddy's uh, compound house, whatever you want to call it. I think when it's bad news, it's called a compound. When it's good news, when it's like, look at the lives of the rich and famous, it's called a, uh, a mansion. So when it's positive, but when it's bad, when the guy's getting arrested, then it's a compound. But when it's good, then it's uh, a wonderful resort house that he has. Anyway. This raid is insane. Here's some video Sean Diddy of Combs' ex-girlfriend uh, Melissa Hilton posted a compilation of short scenes from a raid this, inside the rapper's Los Angeles home. We are talking home. dozens and dozens law of armed troops, guns out, guns pointed. Uh, now, here's the thing. I am opposed, and I, I want this on the record. I am opposed to uh, sex trafficking. I'm opposed to these uh, uh, horrifying uh, pedophile parties that uh, that are connected to these lawsuits, uh, involved in these lawsuits, etc. But I'm also opposed to massive police, fascist state, uh, fascist police brutality. So I don't know that they needed to raid his house like this. I feel like couldn't they just have enticed him out or maybe asked him to come out rather than go in guns blazing? into his uh, compound here. Couldn't they have just like put a 16 year old girl out front and say, I need help with my car. Wouldn't that like, wouldn't that have gotten him outside instead of they went in with source tanks told CNN, and the raid was connected to an ongoing and sex trafficking here, investigation. They had a drone right Hilton there, the uploaded drone. the heavily edited We're footage on Instagram hallway. on April 3rd. And I'm sorry, but when you have a drone, running down these hallways there's no way that thing doesn't smash into a lot of these guys faces accidentally there's no way i'm sorry i know these advanced weaponry and there's no way that some of these soldiers don't get clipped in the ass by this drone footage on instagram on april happen. 3rd criticizing anyway, the quote overtly militarized see, and force I guess used against her son there. justin I mean, and claims other son christian the house, so who were at the home when it was raided uh, a senior federal law enforcement official told CNN heavily armed teams from Homeland Security not, Investigations uh, searched Combs' homes but in this part the because it was of, believed there were armed know, private security war, at each of his residences. Um, no criminal charges have been filed. Oh, really? Someone's telling me the audio on that. Oh, that was weird. Ooh, sorry. I'm told the audio on the video is on. I didn't. I didn't think it was on. Anyway. Done with that video anyway. So sorry about the audio issues, uh, but but I'm to to reiterate in case you couldn't hear me through all the audio craziness um, that 
I, I am opposed to, to everything that uh, P. Diddy's been involved in, uh, according to these accusations, according to these uh, these lawsuits. But I'm also opposed to massive police brutality like that. I don't think uh, I don't think they needed to uh, go in with tanks and automatic rifles. I think they could have just uh, perhaps, you know, sent in like uh, like had a had a 16 year old girl out front saying she needed help with her car. I feel like that would have also. Um, I feel like that would have handled it probably, but anyway, so I'm going to get into, uh, the connections between the P Diddy lawsuit and some, uh, some of these uh, billionaire and multi multi-millionaire Zionists. And, uh, again, if you case you need a reminder, Zionist does not equal Jewish. Uh, I am Jewish and anti-Zionist. There are also more Christian Zionists across the United States than there are Jews in the world. So Zionist does not equal, uh, um, Jewish. But okay, before real quick, before we get to the, the, the P. Diddy lawsuits and the other connections, uh, I just wanted to play for you. This is an Israeli tank commander. We're on day 185 of Israel's genocide operation. And this is an Israeli tank commander who is part of the uh, the group that is, is uh, I think it's called Silent No More or something like that, uh, Breaking the Silence. And they've been they've been speaking out uh, uh, about the the genocidal intent of the Israeli military, how the Israeli military behaves, um, what their goals are, what they're told to do. And anyway, here is a former IDF tank commander speaking on the news. Here today, it's just an extremely easy finger on the trigger, and that I think is one of the major causes for what happened to the aid workers. Yeah, because. Hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll slow it down a bit. When we have government ministers like Ben Gvir and Smotrich and also Gallant and others, yeah, encouraging killing, encouraging destruction, not, there, there is basically zero repercussion for killing of innocent Palestinians, not only in this war, but now more than ever. There is also no incentive for a soldier to not shoot because there will be no yeah. price paid. I, I mean, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, but are Israeli soldiers, I mean, are, are Palestinians dehumanized in your view? For 100%, 100%, 100%, and we have been, to, I, I personally, you know, one of the things that made me... Uh, a... Let me just pause for a second and say that's, that to me, that is a, a huge revelation and, and a key point that he made there is there is no incentive for the IDF to not shoot, to ever not kill civilians. There is essentially zero accountability. There is zero people above them saying, don't kill innocent people. The, the only thing that's being checked for the IDF, for these lower level people on the um, uh, on the ground, the only thing that's being uh, checked to, 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 for accountability is whether they're killing enough people. Are you bombing enough? Are you shooting enough? Did you kill enough Palestinian men uh, you know, that we're just claiming every Palestinian man is a, is Hamas. That, that's the only accountability there is. Maybe there's a little bit of that, but there's no incentive for these people not to shoot, not to kill someone. Thank you, Dan, for starting off the Super Chats. Dan says, Lee Camp, keep fighting, keep helping the world wake up. Thank you so much, Dan. Love you. And uh, by the way, everyone who throws in a Super Chat helps support this show. Uh, you will get a, a new car. I will send you a new car. I think... This week, I think it's a, a Toyota Camry. Um, I don't, do they do they make new <laughs> new Toyota Camrys? Anyway, I'll be sending you one of those for every super chat you throw in. So, uh, but yeah, this and, and I'm glad that there are those breaking the silence like this tank commander saying that Palestinians are dehumanized, that there's no incentive for them not to shoot, not to kill innocent people. Um, also, in terms of the the updates of what has happened with Iran we we still it still seems that Iran will likely strike back against Israel as you probably know Israel just a few days ago I covered it earlier on the show bombed the the Iranian embassy in Damascus in Syria killing uh several Iranians including generals and of course it, it, harming or arresting or going into another country's uh embassy is a huge violation of international law even if you were at war with Syria, even if Israel says they're at war with Syria, um, that it's still a violation of international law to go into another country's embassy. It does it the, so bombing the Iranian embassy is a crazy violation of international law. Thank you, Underhill, so much for the donation, and thank you, Dan, for another one. Yes, 
Dan's getting a car. Underhill's getting a car. Everybody's getting new cars. I have at least 13 sitting out back ready to go because clearly the, the financials of that will add up. You donate $5 via Super Chat, and that's uh, I can easily afford to get you a car. So that, that works well. But uh, Iran's foreign minister is now accusing the U.S. of actually giving the green light to Israel to attack the consulate in Syria to murder these Iranians. Um, and, you know, some of you may go, well, duh, but it, it, it is a different level to have Iran say that this has happened, that the U.S. did give that green light. Now, I kind of assumed the that U.S. gave that green light because Israel's not going to uh, do such a thing as bomb a foreign country's embassy and kill their generals without getting the okay from their sugar daddy, from the one sending them weapons, sending them the weapons of death that are actually making this genocide po possible. So they are now, Iran is saying they did get the okay. Iran's foreign minister Monday accused the U.S. of giving Israel the green light for a strike on its consulate building in Syria that killed seven Iranian military officials, including two generals. Tehran vows that it will respond to the attack, widely blamed on Israel, that appeared to signify an escalation of Israel's targeting of military officials from Iran. And many have postulated that this is Israel trying to actually create a larger war because Israel wants the U.S. involved in a regional war. It's kind of the only way that Israel can defend itself is to have the U.S. fully involved in a regional war so that the U.S. will continue the weapons shipments that go on every 36 hours, every 36 hours. Biden is shipping more weapons to Israel. And right now in Congress, Biden is trying to get approval to send F-15 fighter jets to Israel. Billions of dollars worth. All right, more on Israel coming up. But for a moment, let's go to this uh, P. Diddy story uh, that connects to Israel, to large, high-level uh, Zionists. And this is written by Alex Rubenstein. I know him well. Great journalist for Mint Press. My former uh, boss. Or the, he's not my boss. I mean, the, uh, I used to work for Mint Press is what I meant. Anyway, uh, th this is a photo. I can't tell if maybe Ashton Kutcher was added. Yeah, the, these the, they were added on top of it. But the, the they are. There was an event called Friends of the IDF. Friends of uh, the, the Friends of the IDF that. Uh, P. Diddy and I think Ashton Kushner was also at. But anyway, that's why they have the FIDF uh, logo there at the top. Billionaire Zionist Lucian Grange is the chairman and CEO of Universal M Music Group, the largest music company in the world. He and his company have also been named defendants in a lawsuit against hip-hop impresario P. Diddy, whose legal name is Sean Combs. And you'll notice that your mainstream media is focusing very heavily on P. Diddy and focusing just about zero on Lucian Grange or the fact that uh, tied in and snared into this is the largest uh, music company in the world. Combs has many friends Yet among his closest are the are an outsized number of influential Zionists. Combs has been hit with five civil lawsuits in four months, while the Department of Homeland Security raided his homes in Miami and Los Angeles in late March, said to have hundreds of cameras inside his properties and naturally footage of politicians and music industry executives. Combs' role in potential sex blackmail operation with links to the Israel lobby bears a shocking resemblance to, does anyone know, Jeffrey Epstein. The Jeffrey Epstein connections. Uh, for those of you who didn't, uh, who those of you who didn't really keep up with the the day-to-day -day of the Epstein revelation, not in the mainstream media. This is the stuff revealed by others, such as Alex Rubenstein, Whitney Webb, and others. But Epstein was heavily connected to Israel, uh, heavily, so was Max, uh, uh, Maxwell, and uh, heavily co connected to M Mossad. And there's a, a lot of evidence. I don't know if they've ever found the smoking gun, but a lot of evidence showing that he uh, was a blackmail operation 
um, of uh, of world leaders, of of millionaires and billionaires, uh, in which they would arrange for them to have these, you know, to have sex with these women um, that were that were often sex trafficked, often lied to about what they were getting involved in, often uh, felt f- fearful that if they left. They would, uh, you know, and said no, that they could be harmed in many ways or that their career would be destroyed if they had some sort of other career like acting or something or music. And and anyway, then there then those people are filmed uh, and then that is used to blackmail them. So this seems like it could have I mean, with all these cameras throughout uh, Diddy's house, seems like it could be something similar. One of the most powerful men in music with ties to the friends of the IDF organization has been accused of financing and attending the parties held by the artist, which featured trafficked underage sex workers. Meanwhile, A-list actor Ashton Kutcher and other entertainment industry honchos close to Combs have maintained longstanding ties to the Israel lobby. One of the civil lawsuits was filed by Rodney Jones, a former producer hired by Combs. It accuses Diddy of sexual assault. In graphic detail, the lawsuit alleges an Epstein-style conspiracy that includes crimes ranging from sex trafficking of minors to surreptitious druggings, sexual assault, and gun violence. According to the lawsuit, Combs, quote, freak off parties were paid for by Universal Music Group CEO Lucian Grange and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia uh, Habtamarium Habtamarium in cash to avoid detection by federal authorities. Defendants executed their, this is a quote from the lawsuit, defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry, parading powerful music industry executives at his parties filled with sex workers, minors, and illegal drugs. Um, and, and so it seems like this, this, this billionaire, Lucian uh, Grange, who is a, a big funder of, uh, you know, the Zionist cause and, uh, and other pro-Israel efforts, including friends of I, uh, IDF, he he wasn't just attending these things, which, you know, the attending thing is like, or they say someone was in Epstein's black book. That doesn't necessarily mean they did anything. Epstein met a lot of very rich, powerful people. He probably tried to get all of their phone numbers. So it's, it's when you get into things like Bill Clinton taking 26 trips on Epstein's jet that you know something was up, definitely. Uh, now, knowing Epstein is not a great thing, but it is uh, him having a phone number or something is a little different. Attending P. Diddy's parties. I don't doubt there were also a lot of famous women attending P. Diddy's parties, uh, probably as well. But when you're funding these parties, you sure as hell know what's going on uh, because you had to cough up the cash for it, which apparently was paid for in cash so that these things could not be followed, so that what was going on could not be traced. Mr. Combs required, and and can you imagine? By the way, I, I I've heard the 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 amounts of money thrown on you know incredibly rich parties like this. It can get it's definitely in the hundreds of thousands. It can get into the millions. I don't know how you get to hand over millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars of cash. I mean, him him handing to uh, caterers and everything else. Uh, duffel bags of cash sounds like just true full on mafia level. But anyway, Mr. Combs required the sex workers and underage girls to sign NDAs, non-disclosure agreements prior to entering his parties and prior to being drugged and sex trafficked at these parties, unquote. So that's a quote from the lawsuit. Um, and that's what they're alleging. Jones believes that Mr. Combs has recordings of defendants namely Grange and have to marry him, as well as other celebrities, music label executives, politicians, and athletes. Grange has supported pro-Israel initiatives. Grange was photographed at a glitzy Friends of the IDF in 2016. According to UK government documents, Grange's wife, Caroline Grange, also funds several Zionist organizations. Lucian Grange also happens to be a close friend of Hayam Saban. Uh, you, uh, you've you probably heard of him before, uh, one of the biggest donors of the Democratic Party. 
uh, and a, a mega do mega donor to the Zion to the Zionist causes like the Friends of IDF. Saban is a, an independent non-executive director at Universal Mu Music Group, and last month held a fundraiser for Genocide Joe. Genocide Joe Biden. I don't want Genocide Joe as president anymore. I want Genocide Trump as president now. That's going to fix everything. We need to switch from one genocidal maniac to the other, and then all will be well in the world, right? Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> in a recent interview, uh, Deal, which is uh, uh, P. Diddy's bodyguard, Gene Deal, in a recent interview, Deal claims that Combs was a confidential informant for the FBI. Quote, confidential informants get paid good. But P uh, Puffy Combs was a millionaire. He, Him being a confidential informant, him getting money like that, it was favors. The guy's point, the uh, former bodyguard's point, is that the, the FBI didn't have enough money to pay P. Diddy a mountain of money that mattered to him. He already was a multi, 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 multi millionaire. So uh the what they did for him, why so why be an FBI informant? Well, what they did for him was favors anytime he got caught up. And anyway, I'll continue. This is a continue quote from his bodyguard. He was getting favors and they were and then paying law enforcement people for years to protect him. He had a budget for law enforcement. Now, if something goes wrong, those people got friends in certain places. Then he tells his handler, yo, can you make this go away for me? His handler at the FBI. So this also, uh, you know, hooks in the FBI into this whole uh, pedo party sex trafficking thing. If he's an FBI informant, they're doing favors to help cover up any of the laws he's breaking. Anytime someone at other at levels of law enforcement starts to get a smell of it and, and maybe grabs up one of his friends or something, he can call the FBI and say, can a little help here? And they would give him the help because he's an FBI informant. In charge of the bribes, according to the lawsuit, was Kristen Corum who is compared in the lawsuit to Ghislaine Maxwell. She and the head of security at Combs Entertainment, Fahim Mohammed, and it are accused of handling the bribes to law enforcement and the cash payments to sex workers. Kutcher was a chairman and co-founder. Uh, this is Ashton, Ashton Kutcher now. And uh, Alex doesn't mention in the article, I don't think he does, that Ashton Kutcher, so Ashton Kutcher's wife is uh, Jewish, Mila Kunis. Uh, my, did I mispronounce that? Anyway, um, she's Jewish and he is now, he hasn't technically converted, but he follows uh, uh, Kabbalah. He, he studies Torah. So he's really, Ashton Kutcher is really more Jewish than I am. I mean, he didn't grow up Jewish like I did, but he if he's studying Torah now, I'm sorry, I'm not studying the Torah these days. So, uh, but anyway, he, he so he hasn't technically converted, but he's basically uh, uh following Judaism and, and he, um, and he, uh, has done a lot of things for the Zionist cause for friends of IDS, et cetera. Kutcher was a chairman and co-founder of an anti-child sex trafficking organization called Thorn, which works closely with the FBI and other federal law enforcement agencies. I've been, uh, this is a quote I've been, uh, sorry, a quote from Ashton Kutcher. I've been on FBI raids where I've seen things that no person should ever see. I've seen video content of a child that's the same age as mine being raped by an American man that was a sex tourist in Cambodia. And Alex then makes a great point in this article. Kutcher did not explain. He was testifying to Congress at the time. He did not explain why exactly as a leader of an anti-sex trafficking operation, and you're mainly, when he's the leader and chairman of this thing, what's he doing? He's mainly raising money and, and attention for it. That's his job. You're a famous actor. You run around getting money and getting attention for this cause. There is no reason why he should have to watch horrific sex trafficking videos. Like, and so uh, Alex Rubenstein makes the point why <laughs> he, ne he neglected to explain why he would need to watch such things. He's not the investigator. Also, Ashton Kutcher, huge fan of the intelligence state. Uh, this isn't, I think this isn't even that old a photo uh 2018 okay 2018 posting his cia posting a photo of his cia mug talking about how the intelligence community keeps us safe and protects our country 
Kutcher is a prolific investor in surveillance firms. Uh, meanwhile, his pro he's made many pro CIA comments, and uh, here he is in photos with uh, I uh, I don't know if that's I don't think that's Lucian Grange. No, that's not Lucian Grange. Anyway, uh, Kutcher stepped down from his role at Thorn, which he was a co-founder of, in disgrace last September after he wrote a letter of support for his friend, now convicted rapist Danny Masterson, uh, and his, his letter of support sparked major backlash, which caused him to have to step down from the organization he founded. Uh, asked, so in an interview in 2019 for the Hot Ones podcast, he was asked about the notorious Diddy party stories and whether he had any because it was well known that he was good friends with P. Diddy. And Kutcher stammered a bit and then said, I got a lot I can't tell. So uh, uh, I can't tell that one either. Um, so can't tell about the uh, P. Diddy parties he attended. But I don't know. The you know, you 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 can decide what to believe. Did Ashton Kutcher have no idea what his friend P. Diddy was up to? Or it, did he create this sex tra anti-sex trafficking organization as a kind of thou doth protest too much kind of situation? Kind of like Larry Craig, the uh the the sexual predator congressman. Uh wait, no, it wasn't him, it was another congressman uh named I I think. I feel like his name might have been Mick Foley. I feel like it might have been the same name as the wrestler. But I uh, anyway, I'm not going to take time looking it up. There was a congressman who was the head of the Child Protective uh, Committee in Congress, whatever the name of that committee is. And it came out that he was a sexual predator and had, quote unquote, dated, I think, 16-year-olds. Uh, and anyway, so is it a thou doth protest too much situation? But all of this to say, and this is obviously just the tip of the iceberg. This is what uh, Alex Rubenstein was able to glean from this, this, the, the information in this lawsuit, which is obviously not all the information. It's not everything people could know. Um, and then there's a separate lawsuit that just came out a few days ago against P. Diddy's son for sexual assault uh, at a party that uh, Diddy was at. So... There is a tight uh, Zionist connection to to all of this and these disgusting parties where and, and I saw someone before I even started the uh, the live stream here. Someone wrote, uh, you know, what's the problem? They're all consenting adults. They got paid for what they did. Uh, that's not, you know, basically that's well, first of all, in some states, prostitution uh, pay, paying for sex is illegal. Now, uh, I think that's a easy debate to have as to whether that should be. But uh, that's actually a, a lot of what's being accused is not consenting adults. First of all, it is children in many cases. But besides just the children, there are at least several of these women who say they were drugged there. So they may have gone in knowing this was a, a sex party or something, but that doesn't mean that they consented if they then are drugged with something. Uh, the In the allegations against his son, the woman said she was drugged, so she was she was working on the boat. It was a yacht party, working on the boat and uh, as a as a waitress or something. And she he insisted, uh, Diddy's son insisted she drink something tequila or something, and she feels she was uh, drugged and then assaulted. So yeah, that's not consenting adults. So anyone saying oh it's consenting adults, they got paid uh, incorrect. Stop saying that because you're full of shit. Um. But yeah, another as as with Epstein, big connections to the the Israeli apartheid state and those supporting it. And uh, let's uh, let's let's wait to see what else comes out. Whether uh, now that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to be getting in a few minutes here to destroying the uh, the propagandist, the Israeli propagandist that Abby Martin debated on Pierce Morgan. I'm going to spend a few minutes doing that. Uh, Abby, uh, for those of you who joined late, I, or maybe I was talking through that uh, awful uh, audio at the beginning of the show. Anyway, uh, Abby did a great job, but so many lies are being split out, spit out and so much garbage is being spit out that it was... It, 
absolutely impossible for Abby to break it all down and explain all of the, the intricacies of the manipulation, the propaganda. I'm not saying I'm going to be able to achieve that, but I'm going to do my best uh, for at least a few minutes of that interview. But before we get to that, some more stories. And also, please click share. Please click, th click thumbs up. I am fighting the endless suppression. Uh, and so you guys make this possible. The channel is growing. Tens of thousands of you watch this every day or watch it often. And I can't thank you enough. The super chats really do help. And whether you're watching this live or not, you can hit the little thanks button. Uh, on YouTube and throw a couple of bucks to the show. That does make a big difference. Uh, but most importantly, if you want to help this show with 30 cents, a, 38 cents uh, an episode, go join up at LeeCamp.net and become a part of the community. Okay, I want to bring to you, and then, you know, the, throw, i got to throw in some, uh, some good news here uh, as well. The new Irish prime minister. So you might recall that I showed the clip of the Irish prime minister, the outgoing. Well, he he stepped down the day after he said it. So basically, he's standing next to Biden, eviscerating uh, Israel for he didn't use the word genocide, but maybe he used the word war crimes against Palestinians. And he then quit being prime minister the following day. Uh, but. Here is the next prime minister that has just become prime minister of Ireland. So what we've seen happen in Gaza, the actions of the Israeli government um, is utterly uh, reprehensible. It's appalling um, and it's grotesque. Um, we are seeing children being maimed and killed, innocent children. It is disgusting, it is despicable, and it must stop. Uh, this country, Ireland, and a government that I intend to lead will always speak truth to power just like our Taoiseach Leo Varadkar did in the White House to President Biden um, only in recent weeks. There needs to be an immediate ceasefire. The attack on aid workers was particularly, in my view, callous and chilling, and we will continue to call that out. We also, as a country, stand ready to play our part in a political process that brings about a two-state solution. This country, uh, and indeed the UK, know a lot about the importance of peace processes. This ultimately requires a political solution that delivers a two-state solution. So there it is. Biden's not going to get much reprieve from the Irish prime minister ca calling out this genocide. It appears uh, this guy's on it as well. Um, I guess his name's Harris. Anyway, uh, it, it, he um, I will correct one thing he said or or add to it, which is he said the attack on the aid workers was particularly chilling. Uh, no, it wasn't the attack, although many people are highlighting the World Central Kitchen, which was also three attacks. But the reason everyone's highlighting that one is because that was white people, that was Americans, that was Canadians, that was Australians, that was British people that were murdered in that attack. But uh, if, you, if you're talking about attacks on aid workers, they have killed over 100 aid workers just from UNRWA alone, just from the UN Relief Agency alone over the past six months of this egregious, disgusting, depraved genocide. So uh, people are highlighting the World Central Kitchen attack. You need to highlight all of these attacks on aid workers, on journalists, on teachers, on IT tech professionals. Israel has been assassinating, strategically assassinating G Gazans who are specialists in IT tech because they want to stop the, the the ability of Gaza to rebuild, to create a functioning and modern society, and to just they also want to destroy the culture of Gaza. Anyway, so I just want to say it's not he said the attack. No, no, this is dozens of attacks on aid workers that have been going on for months, but uh, the West cares more about the white people that have been killed. Thank you, Nadia, for the super chat. Yes, yes, Nadia. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for helping support this show. But, okay, so I now want to get to some awesome, uh, well, I think it's one particular awesome protester uh, just, just wrecking Wrecking. I love watching the speeches of sociopaths get just ruined. Just you, just those nice little clean little speaking events where they think they're going to have no trouble. They're going to have no issue. Just saying, spouting their garbage, spouting their propaganda. Anyway, this is the uh, USAID Assistant Administrator for Global Health. 
Dr. Atul Gawande. And USAID, for those who don't know, is uh, essentially a, a, um, a CIA cutout. It Now, there are many at USAID. USAID is a large organization. There are many there who don't even know really what they're involved in. They're there to help countries, and they do help countries in a small way, but USAID uses that help to then manipulate that country, to foment color revolutions, to create coups that will benefit the U.S. empire. So uh, USAID is, is useful to the U.S. empire in that way. Now, this guy, since he's one of the upper people at USAID, I have no doubt he understands the true purpose. But anyway, watch this uh, young woman and especially listen to right at the beginning where she's threatened by the event organizer, I'm assuming, that he's going to call the cops and she doesn't give a shite. <laughs> oh! All right. Question, actually? You may not. No, yes, I may. No, we will, we will ask you to leave. She, she said, may I ask a question? And they said, you may not. And she said, oh, yes, I may. <laughs> That's fine. I would like to ask, please. Okay. I'd like to ask, since you have made a statement on the attacks on healthcare workers in Ukraine, will you condemn the attacks on healthcare workers in Gaza by the Israeli Defense Force, funded by the U.S. government, and condemn President Biden's support of those attacks? I'm trying to get to that point. Will you explicitly condemn it? The attacks that we saw uh, in Israel uh, over the last few days, in which our partner, uh, the World uh, Kitchen, uh, the, the World Kitchen, World Center Kitchen, in Palestine, okay. the attacks in Palestine, in Gaza. Are we gonna have the, Are we going to have a discussion here? In the, in my Gaza Israel? To, Is Gaza Israel? Am I going to be able to finish this? All right. So, could could you guys hear that? He said the attacks in Israel. Are the attacks in Israel or are they in Palestine or are they in Gaza? But he's trying to claim that Gaza is Israel, which uh, it's not. But, of course, Israel acts like they can do whatever the hell they want in Gaza. You, oh, you said Israel. And it's, it's Gaza. It's true. I, I said, okay, that's fine. The attacks in Gaza uh, from the World Central Kitchen, uh, on the World Central Kitchen uh, team, is outrageous. The U.S. government has said that Israel is in compliance with international humanitarian law as they use U.S. bombs and weapons to destroy hospitals and kill doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, patients, and children. Do you agree that Israel is in compliance with U.S. humanitarian law as they decimate the healthcare system in Gaza? We're going to move on to the next speaker. You're at the office in your Russia. I think you should ask you. Peter, we ask you to use your power, man. Please. Gonna run away? Can I ask a question? <laughs> He just, we're going to move on to the next speaker because uh, this this guy's not uh, doesn't actually have any answers. Can't actually call it genocide. Can't actually uh, say anything other than just we don't like that World Central Kitchen got hurt. Uh, how about the thirty three thousand others who've been murdered? Does that does that matter at all? No. Oh, okay, just the seven at World Central Kitchen. That is it. That is the only one. Okay, let's see here. Real quick, this is from Climate Defiance talking about uh, the ongoing ecocide, ecocide in Gaza, which is a lesser story, obviously, than people starving to death. But it is still an important one because ecocide is a war crime. Uh, it's not just murdering people. Anyway, Climate Defiance says no one is talking about it, but Israel is eviscerating the natural ecosystems in Gaza. This could make the land uninhabitable, not just for years, but for generations. Up to 48 percent of tree cover and farmland has been torched. This is a war crime. It's ecocide. Israel is burning and bulldozing tree crops at historic rates. These trees would take years to grow back, and that's without factoring in the time it would take to detoxify the soil. Israel is intentionally turning the soil toxic. It gets worse. Twenty-three percent of greenhouse gases have been just uh, sorry greenhouses have been destroyed in their entirety. Destroying up to 40% of tree crops and 23% of greenhouses is a horrendous crime. And they show this photo or these two photos. This is before Israel's attack on Gaza. And this is after uh, in one area, one neighborhood. And you can see that just 
everything is obliterated. And if you were just trying to get Hamas, like if that was your goal just to get Hamas, then what would be the point of this? What would be the point of turning the soil toxic and blowing up all the trees? Uh, of course, getting Hamas is not actually the, the the goal. The goal is a full-on ethnic cleansing of Gaza. And that's why you do this. That's why you destroy the trees, destroy the life, destroy the farms, so that people, even if all firing stopped now, they have made it, Israel has made it so that in many areas of Gaza, people could not live there. It would just be absolutely antithetical to human life. And that's their goal. It's ethnic cleansing, it, 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 completely obviously. Um, and and it's ecocide. And ecocide is a war crime. Uh, what the U.S. did in Vietnam with Agent Orange was another example of a war crime. Thank you, Magic Nine, for the donation over on Rumble. Magic Nine says, screw USAID. They sh they are sure helping in Serbia after bombing it. Uh, yeah, they've, they've done a lot for the Serbian people, I think. Definitely. But yes, this is this is this is ecocide. Uh, climate defiance continues. Restoring the land will be profoundly difficult. The soil now contains asbestos, heavy metals, and even undetonated explosives. Waste disposal infrastructure is in ruins. Sewage treatment systems are failing. People are burning plastic to heat food. Fumes from bombs hang in the air. This is not just about nature. This is about the food and the air and the water and the land of the deprived life. And this all speaks to how genocidal, how sociopathic, how insane uh, Israel and, in connection, the U.S. empire is. They, The U.S. empire, this is a U.S.-backed genocide. The U.S. empire does not stand for life. They stand for a death spiral that enriches a tiny, tiny, minuscule number of people. That is what they stand for. And we're seeing it again and again and again. Okay, let me get to, oh my God, I'm running out of time. Before I get to the Abby Martin clip, uh, Ecuador is uh, is socially collapsing, but they also have just done something that the U.S. set the precedent for, uh, the U.S. and Britain, which is going into another, and, and you know, we just brought up how, how uh, Israel bombed the Iranian embassy, uh, which is against international law. This is, uh, the Mexican, so the video here is the Mexican ambassador in Ecuador at the embassy tr running onto the street and trying to stop the Ecuadorian military from kidnapping the former VP of Ecuador, Jorge Glass, who was given asylum there. So I, I know it's a little confusing, but the former VP of Ecuador, uh, I'll give you more details in a moment, but they put out a, a thing for his arrest, a, a notice for his arrest. He went into the Mexican embassy for uh, uh, asylum. They reviewed his case and gave him asylum, which you'll recall, Julian Assange was given asylum, ironically, in the Ecuadorian embassy in London for seven years, six or seven years. And ultimately, the reason Assange was arrested out of the Ecuadorian embassy was because the president of Ecuador changed to Lenin Moreno, who is a stooge, a puppet, was a puppet of the U.S. empire. And within days of allowing Britain to violate the Ecuadorian embassy and arrest Julian Assange, Ecuador was given $4 billion by the IMF. Well, what is that? Not only did the $4 billion come with the price tag of give us Julian Assange, it also came with the price tag of you have to create austerity. You have to crush your people and privatize your assets to pay us back the $4 billion and change. And, and Ecuador has gone on to do that. So the austerity, the neoliberal austerity has crushed Ecuador. Putting in these U.S. Uh, puppet presidents has also crushed Ecuador. Anyway, all of that to say, here is the video of the Mexican uh, official trying to stop this arrest.
And they just tackle him there and throw him to the ground. Uh, and it's completely illegal under international law what they did to go into the Mexican embassy um, and arrest this VP. And here is more of the fallout. Mexico has cut diplomatic ties with Ecuador after the Jorge Gloss arrest. Mexican Pre President AMLO, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, said they had forcibly entered the embassy in a flagrant violation of international law. Gloss took refuge in the embassy last December after Ecuador issued an uh, arrest warrant against him for alleged corruption. Gloss's lawyer said he was innocent. Gloss served as Ecuador's vice president between 2013 and 2017. He was when, when the president in power was not a U.S. puppet. He was relieved of his duties because of mounting corruption allegations against him. Mexico said it had granted Glass political asylum after a thorough analysis of the situation and action Ecuador viewed as illegal. Um, also, he had already, Glass had already served six years in prison and had like served his time and been released. So he would serve six years and then got out of prison. And then they came up with new charges to try to arrest him again. That's when he went into the Mexican embassy this December. Uh, so you're seeing the the kind of uh, the remnants of world law, world international law are collapsing. And so much of that is thanks to the U.S. empire. The U.S. empire, both with arresting Julian Assange out of the Ecuadorian embassy, bringing charges against Julian Assange, even though he's not an American citizen, even though he's a journalist, and even though he's never operated from America, uh, you know, the, the, the various U.S. strikes, including assassinating Iran's general uh, Soleimani uh, when Trump was in office and all of the coups that the U.S. commits are, are breaking these international laws that have held up to some degree. You know, international law, it's it's broken at times, but in many ways it has held up. Respecting other uh, countries, embassies has largely held up until the U.S. and U.K. broke that uh, with the Ecuadorian embassy. Then they broke it again with the Venezuelan embassy uh, in Washington, D.C. I was there during that, and um, many of my friends were the were the were those who occupied the Venezuelan embassy in order to try and protect it for the Venezuelan government. Uh, a, you know, good friends like uh, Kevin Zeese, Margaret Flowers, and others um, were in there uh, trying to defend the Venezuelan embassy. Uh, Eleanor Goldfield was there as well for a bit. But anyway, uh, and the U.S. just completely violated all that international law to just steal, basically, the Venezuelan embassy in D Washington, D.C. So the U.S. and the U.K. have again and again said, look, violating international law is fine. Um, it's just something we, uh, we're, we're cool with doing, and we'll do it as uh, much as we want. And, of course, this leads to others like Ecuador, and Ecuador probably spoke to the U.S. and said, do you endorse us uh, violating this international law? U.S. probably said, sure, go for it. Why not? All right, one more quick story before we get to the Pierce Morgan clip. Uh, I had mentioned that Joe Biden keeps touting that he's created, you know, whatever it is, 30,000, 300,000, I don't really give a shit, new jobs, and oh, look at all the jobs, most ever, everyone's got jobs now. Of course, there's the initial... Uh, uh, point about that, which is, hey, a system where we have slave labor every day and I get to go to a job I hate. And that means I'm happy and my entire life force is drained out of me in misery so I can make money so I can eat. Pretending that makes sense is, is insane to begin with. But let's move past that for a second and talk about a Biden is saying, oh, the Biden administration, you know, let's face it, Biden doesn't do anything. The Biden administration is saying, oh, we created all these new jobs. Well, Here's the reality of it. March job creation by job type. You have 690,000 part-time jobs uh, in March created. You have negative 6,000 full-time jobs. The number of part-time jobs at a crazy level dwarfs the number of full-time jobs because 
the capitalism has realized that workers are more exploited and have less power if we are part-time workers, if we, and part-time workers almost always don't have unions, um, almost always don't get benefits. And so you can exploit workers, they can be fired for any reason, can exploit workers far better, which is what a corporation wants, by having them be part-time and gig employees. So you have the Biden administration saying, look at all the jobs we created. Meanwhile, the number that are actually good jobs are a, a tiny, tiny fraction or actually negative in this in this chart in this month. Um, and, and of course, this is the same under Trump. It doesn't matter, Trump, Biden, Obama, it's the same. It's the gravity of capitalism towards exploiting people to the nth degree as much as possible to exploit us all as much as possible. This chart also does not mention that uh, the reason we have so many, that, that the jobless numbers are better than they used to be or whatever is because a lot of people stop looking for work and those people are not counted as unemployed. If you stop looking for work, you're no longer part of the unemployment. You're, uh, you're, you're just not counted at all. So they can go, oh, look, the number of unemployed in America is down because people have just given up. Uh, so that's a big part of this as well. But anyway, important chart there that I don't think Biden is touting. And that chart is how you have 690, 700,000 new jobs created. Meanwhile, two thirds of Americans still living paycheck to paycheck. 60% or more of Americans cannot afford uh, the, the rent or the mortgage on a house, cannot afford a house. How do you have everybody getting jobs? Great jobs if 60% can't afford a house. Well, this is how, because these are 70,000 shitty part-time jobs. Uh, so big point to be made there. Okay, I got to get to it. Uh, Abby Martin and, and Piers Morgan, let's play that clip now. And all the rest of this, by the way, is at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. Free to watch there. Rumble.com slash Lee Camp, as well as locals. Free to watch. Rumble.com slash Lee Camp. Go to rumble.com slash Lee Camp. I'll see you at rumble.com slash Lee Camp. R-U-M-B-L-E dot com slash L-E-E-C-A-M-P. I'll see you there right now. Let's do it.